Uh, and so, Mark, what is new and fresh and shiny and lovely? So, um, No Bears, which is the new film by Jafar Panahi, who is the great uh, Iranian auteur who, um, in July, was ordered to serve a six-year prison sentence and uh, who has been banned from making films since 2010, a ban which has spectacularly failed to stop him making films. 2011, he made This Is Not A Movie, which was smuggled out of Iran on a USB hidden inside a cake. Um, went on to play at Cannes. Incredible. He made Close Curtain and Taxi Tehran, both of which won uh, significant awards uh, at uh, Berlin. And Three Faces then won Best Screenplay at Cannes. So his latest film, when it uh, played at the Miami Film Festival, there was a rec- where he, he, he won a Precious Gem Award. There was a recording that had been made in prison of him saying, I wish I could make films instead of receiving awards because I have, you know, so many more stories to tell. So he is the very definition of an artist who, you know, is genuinely in love with the medium and will con- and will make films against all odds. Mm. You know, you hear filmmakers say, oh, it's so hard to make this film. <laughs> you go, yeah, really? Really? <laughs> Try this on for size. So given that, it's not surprising that his films have... Recently, or since 2010, in what's referred to as the dissident era, have often been about the process and the difficulties of making films. I mean, this is not a film was about not being able to make a film very specifically, right from its from its title up. <clears throat> so we begin with a couple who are trying to get passports to get to Europe, and they only one of them has a passport we there's something odd about the scene and we then realize that what's odd about it is that it's being acted it's being acted in turkey but it's being directed in iran by jafar panahi playing jafar panahi wow, or okay. at least playing a version of himself directing by remote control because he is not allowed to leave uh, iran directing over the internet he could have been in tehran which is where he's he was before where he had a very good internet connection but he's decided to go to a remote village near the border so he's physically nearer the shoot but Consequently, mm. the Wi-Fi signal is terrible. So there's a lot of kind of comedic slapstick stuff about having to get a ladder and go up onto the roof and hold up a thing in order that he can direct the drama. He's then visited by his assistant director who takes him to the border. And he says, well, where is the border? He says, you're literally standing on it. This is kind of no man's land. It's in the middle of the night. This is a smuggler's territory where people smugglers, you know, move back and forth. And he... He absolutely cannot. He like he almost sort of physically recoils from the fact that he, that he could just step over the border. And he, meanwhile, has become embroiled in his own domestic drama in the village to which he has arrived, where they're kind of suspicious of him because he's a metropolitan filmmaker who has a reputation for being a troublemaker. And his camera has now got him into trouble. He is told that he has taken a photograph that is important in an incriminating disagreement between two men over a, a young woman. So you have two stories, one of them a fictional story about a couple who are trying to get passports that appears to be tearing them apart, that's being filmed in Turkey. Meanwhile, in the village that Jafar Panahi is in, you have him embroiled in a really strange dispute in which it is alleged that he has a photograph that is incriminating that he says doesn't exist. So these two things are playing out in parallel. The key thing about the film is that as with all of Panahi's films, it's about a number of different things. I'm going to play you a scene which pretty much explains the title. Hmm. Obviously, because the scene is in the original language, I'm going to tell you afterwards what's said. But this is a scene which, in which the title, No Bears, is said out loud. Okay. <laughs> اگه من با شما بگم اینجا خیلی بد میشه اینجا که جای نیست بگه اینجوری بپیچی سمت چپ میگه سی کسم خونه دیگه چیزی نیست که من واسه که بیام پس خیرسا چی؟ بابا خیرسی وجود نداره اینا به ما یاد داده اینجا خیرس هست همینجوری ما را میترسونه اصلا خیرسی وجود نداره همینجا بیره میرسه اینجوری میترسونه خیرسی نیست بوره هم نگاه بوره So what's happening there is two people walking down a darkened alley having a conversation and Jafar Panahi says, what about the bears? Mm. 
And his companion says, there are no bears. He says, town people have problems with authorities. We have problems with superstitions. The stories about bears, they're nonsense. They're just stories made up to scare us. Our fears empower others. No bears. So in a way, that exchange kind of explains a lot of what the film is about, that it's about the way in which power and superstition go hand in hand, the way, you know, the divide between town and country, the um, the power of storytelling, the fact that you're told a story in order to oppress you, or maybe mm -hmm. you're told a story in order to free you, because obviously Jafar Benai is a storyteller. Meanwhile, his actors are starting to doubt whether he is whether his intentions are good, whether he is an honest director, whether he's a truthful director, whether he's trying to manipulate reality. And meanwhile, in the village that he's in, there is this whole discussion about whether a photograph does or doesn't exist. A photograph, crucially, whether the camera has captured something that may or may not point to a truth or an invented truth. Wow, so okay. all this is going on while the film appears on the surface to be a fairly incidental story about somebody attempting to direct a movie across a border because... And this is what I think is fascinating about Jafar Panahi. He has a real, a brilliant way of, through almost sleight of hand, telling stories that are wider than what's going on right in front of you and doing it in a way that almost seems accidental, almost seems incidental. Believe me, there's nothing accidental yeah, sure. in his filmmaking. But he has that miraculous ability of just making a tiny little conversation or a tiny little interaction seem really profound when you start scratching the surface although at the time it's just well it's just this kind of story about this stuff I mean, it's it's tragic and it's also comedic in certain places it's very moving it's already started to win festival awards and rightly so and i would say this once more this is an example of a filmmaker who makes films because that's what they do. Mm. They are a storyteller. This refers back to the Sebastian Lillio thing that you and I were talking about just earlier on. And it's it, it's impossible not to admire his films, but I think it's also pretty hard not to really enjoy them. And right. I use the word enjoy because this is a film that deals with, you know, tragedy and absurdity and all the rest of it. But it's also, it's a, it's a film... To quote my great friend Nigel, Ford, a it's film. a film that is a film. Yeah. You know, it, it struck me as you were speaking that you could, on, on one meta level, it could be a great uh, uh, double bill with the wonder in terms of what's what's true and what isn't in yeah. storytelling. And on another meta level, it could be a great double bill with a bunch of amateurs. Yeah, <laughs> actually, weirdly enough, yes, I had not considered that at all. But that's a very well chosen metaphor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'd like you to see it because I think you'll, oh, no, I think I, you'll find a lot to enjoy. I definitely will. Well, now, that was a great video, I thought. I couldn't it? take my eyes off it. And neither could they. Do you think they know that they can keep up to date with all things Kermit and Mayo's take by checking out our social channels? Well, they do now. Yes, they do.